There may be a deal, but you still can't touch your money. That's the message for the people of Cyprus after the latest international bailout plan was accepted by the government. And big savers are going to take a hit of uh, up to 30% on their investments. Economists reckon the entire economy could shrink by at least 10%. But the banks are still closed. They're not expected to reopen until Thursday at best. Well, Mark Lowen is in the capital, Nicosia, for us. Uh, Mark, given that um, the, the president's talked about limited withdrawals anyway to start with, so why not open the banks again? Well, it is partly to impose the capital controls uh, that, will, uh, that will be introduced as part of this uh, bailout deal with Brussels. There, need, there needs to be preparation time for that, capital controls in terms of how much money is taken out of the banks here in Cyprus, but also uh, how much is allowed to be taken beyond Cyprus's borders. So the banks feel they need time to implement all of that. Uh, there had been talk that all of the banks, bar the two largest ones, would open today, but we hear that uh, they had complained, the smaller banks had complained, saying that they uh, feared that they would then take the brunt of any potential bank run. Uh, so they wanted all the banks to open on Thursday. But uh, this is now unprecedented, David, because the banks have been closed here since the 16th of March. And so there's a real pressure for them to open so that businesses can get the payment behind credit card transactions uh, and that the businesses can pay their employees as the end of the month approaches. It does seem extraordinary, doesn't it? That sort of length of time in, in this day and age, if we can put it like that. And I suppose account holders still have to wait for that awful moment when they do check their accounts and see that some 30-odd percent might have disappeared. Yes, and that will be a huge hit for the wealthiest depositors here, those with over €100,000 in Laiki Bank, the second largest, which is going to be effectively wound down, uh, but also the largest depositors in the Bank of Cyprus, which makes up about third of, a third of all deposits in Cyprus. They will see a, a massive chunk of their savings removed, around 30%, but possibly more, actually, uh, some analysts have feared, because uh, it all depends on how much money is needed to, uh, in effect, bail out uh, those bad banks. So that will come into play. Uh, it is something that uh, will, uh, will uh, cause a, a huge impact, I think, for those wealthiest depositors. What we had yesterday, David, was a, a, a panic, really, in the, in the markets across the Eurozone when the Dutch finance minister, who chairs the Eurogroup, that's the, 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 the group of Eurozone finance ministers, suggested that the bailout model that had been used for Cyprus, those enforced losses on large depositors, could be used for other indebted Eurozone countries. He rode back on the statement a few hours later, but perhaps the damage had already been done. Yeah, it didn't help, did it, Mark? Certainly. Thanks very much indeed, Mark Lowen in Nicosia for us. Now, there may be a deal, but you still can't touch your money. That's the message for the people of Cyprus after the latest international bailout plan was accepted by the government. Big savers are going to take a big hit, something of uh, possibly as much as 40%, according to the Cypriot finance minister speaking to the BBC. That's 40% on their investments, with economists reckoning the entire country could see growth shrink by at least 10%. The banks are still closed, though, and they're not expected to reopen until Thursday at best. Well, Tim Wilcox is on the streets of Nicosia for us. Tim, and what must be such a desperately frustrating time, uh, in sp all the misery to cope with, and they still can't get access to the money. Well, frustration is exactly the right word. I'm in Old Town Nicosia here. It's a pretty quiet, as you can see, a few students around having drinks and coffees, but real frustration among the local traders here in the hotel and restaurant owners as well, because they are running short of cash. They're having to pay their suppliers in cash or ask for extended credit. They can only get certain amounts of money out each day, uh, and it means that if the banks don't open, they're not sure how they're going to pay their monthly salary bills. Let's just speak to, well, one hotel uh, manager here, and also somebody from Wake Up Cyprus, which is a protest group as well. Let's just start with you, um, uh, Panikos Leonido. Uh, you are a uh, hotel manager for a hotel just around the corner here. H how difficult are things for you at the moment, now that the banks still aren't open? It's very difficult because at the end of the month we have to pay our staff, also the suppliers, and it's very difficult without cash money. Okay, now you have, I think, a, a monthly wage bill of what, 22, 25,000 euros, quite yes. a significant amount. What is going to happen if the banks don't open on Thursday? It's a very good question. <laughs> we will see. Okay, we have to contact all our uh, clients, okay, and uh, suppliers. Okay, so with your suppliers at the moment, are they being reasonable? Are they understanding and saying, okay, we'll wait a few, a few weeks for, for you to pay us, or, or are they getting more demanding? 
if we don't have money to pay them, what they have to do, they are uh, things, they have to leave this in the fridge. For how long? They right. have to... I mean, have, have some people said to you that they can't deal with you anymore because you can't pay them? No, not at the moment, no. But you're relying on each other yes. to get through this? Yes. All right. Um, Harry uh, Polivio from uh, Wake Up Cyprus, you've been against this bailout deal from the word go. The government doesn't seem to be very clear at the moment. Yesterday we were told that all the banks would open today, apart from the Bank of Cyprus uh, and Likey. Then suddenly, late at night, no, these banks aren't going to open until Thursday. What is going on? Tim, I don't understand how the banks can open. There is no trust in the euro, there is no trust in the eurozone, there is no trust in our partners, in our family. And uh, I don't see how these measures can be lifted completely, maybe modified. This thing will spread to Southern Europe. I think the, this weekend there are two bank holidays uh, that give the necessary time to administer the situation in the Southern Europe. And I, I think we, we might see the same measures uh, this weekend in uh, all of Southern Europe. Well, let's just concentrate on what's happening in Cyprus at the moment, because there are, um, there are capital transfer controls as well. Uh, how long can the country put up with something like that and still be a viable member of the Eurozone? Uh, in my opinion, the country should go out of the Eurozone. Uh, if this uh, ultimatum from uh, Draghi and Merkel uh, continues, uh, the collective character of the Cypriot people is uh, different. And uh, although some, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, small countries are ignored in the international scene, but sometimes with, we might see heroic uh, showdowns that can, can mark uh, the history and the collective character of a nation. All right. Okay, um, Harry and uh, Panikos, thank you very much indeed. There was a presidential address to the nation last night. Uh, President uh, Nikos uh, Anastasiades uh, asking the Cypriot people to pull together, saying that they'd been through difficult situations before and urging uh, their understanding and support for what the country was going through, promising a better future and hoping to put the past behind them. But at the moment, with nothing really moving in Cyprus, the uh, outlook is uncertain and for many people here, increasingly bleak. Yeah, I bet it is, Tim. Thank you very much indeed, Tim Wilcox there in Nicosia.